Um, so into um, the first speakers, and we will start with Barham. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll try to keep to, well, I'll definitely keep to 10 minutes. <laughs> and um, I've, I'll start off as well. Um, okay, I'm going to talk about confronting the Islamic State. It could be defined as the Islamic State as we know it now, ISIS, the IS, ISIL, whatever you want to call it, or it could be a broader topic of all Islamic States, or Islamism, radical Islam, whatever you want to call it. Uh, just before I start, I just want to go back to uh, my teenage years. That was just a few years ago. Then, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Um, and uh, to 1979, actually, 1978-79, when the Iranian Revolution uh, took place. I'm from Iran. And um, I'll show you the relevance of that to the topic we are discussing today. Um, uh, in those days, we were very excited. We were fighting against the dictator, the Shah of Iran, a very despotic regime. And despite what the media at that time was saying, that the Shah um, was, the pace of westernization was too much, so the people were revolting against it. That wasn't the case at all. Iran was a very cosmopolitan, western-oriented, uh, modern society. And, 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 and the mullahs at that time, you know, the clergy, were in the margins of society, very despised, you know. And nobody in their wildest dreams would think that Iran after the Shah would become an Islamic state. So we were laughing. We were very exuberant. And, um, but what happened was that that secularist, sort of left-leaning revolution, anti-despotic revolution was hijacked. And we were at a loss at that time. So when you look back at it, and then you realize what really went on, um, how it was hijacked. And I think uh, the key words are the uh, Cold War, the uh, power calculated specific equations, political equations of the times. Uh, Iran being a, 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 having a border with the Soviet Union of that time, and uh, just a few months later, you had also the um, uh, invasion of Afghanistan, another neighbor. And you could see that uh, there were the Western powers at that time that were really dreading that the Iran after the Shah could become a communist state. It could be a, a leftist state, a socialist state, a revolutionary one, which could have been. And, and um, so, uh, the doctrine at the time was that you want a green belt around that red m menace, yeah? and that was the Soviet Union. Uh, it wasn't the case that Iran, after the Shah, would fall into the lap of the Soviet Union. A lot of the leftists at that time were not pro-Soviet or pro-Chinese or anything. They identified my, um, my, my, myself and my, the, uh, the people I was uh, with. Uh, we were thinking of just liberation, freedom, anti-dictatorship, you know. And the Soviet Union did not appeal to, to us at all. But in any case, those political equations made it that the Western powers, they opted to, uh, they contrib their contribution was to support the Islamic alternative um, rather than see a, a socialist Iran, which could have been a much more secular, much a freer Iran. And, that is relevant to what is happening today because after that you, you had the support, millions of dollars for the Mujahideen in Afghanistan, and that continued. So the Islamic State, the ISIS, the IC we have today has got roots back from then, you know. In Iran we have had 35 years of uh, ISIS. You know, the beheadings were not the, the invasion, invasion of uh, ISIS. Uh, the, the Soviet, um, Saudi Arabia, an ally of the West, a friend, has been doing that every Friday uh, in the public square for many years now, and they're doing it every day. In Iran, they have been hoisting people in public executions from cranes, from cranes, not even dropping them, hoist them in an agonizing death and execution, and it's been going on for such a long time. So if the Western uh, political interest did not, uh, if it clashed, then they would enter. So. I'm, so this historical um, perspective is important to see that ISIS did not come uh, out of the blue sky. It was a product of a long process. 
And um, if you go back to, to 2003, you know, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, 2003, you could see that it's not just the anti-Soviet and the Cold War situation, even after that, you've got a sort of, what I would call it a rotten ideology, a policy, that you go and support um, any force which uh, would uh, uh, fit in with the policies of the Western powers at the time. And that is exactly what happened. So the Western interventions at that time, they've never been for humanitarian values and for, you know, for any far higher morals. And also what happened, for example, in 2003 after the Iraq war, a lot of us were demonstrating, a lot of you will remember that we were out on the streets, we were saying that if you attack Iraq, you would unleash forces that are much more dangerous than uh, the Saddam Hussein. And this is exactly what happened. The Islamic State has got roots in that. It is part of the political Islamic movement, but it's a new variant. It is not so much anti-American, it's not so much anti-Israeli, anti-Zionist, as, as the other political Islamic movement we have seen, but it's more uh, like a sectarian movement, fighting the kuffar, as they say, the uh, infidels, fighting the other sects, the Shia, and um, the brutality and savagery of ISIS just shows the height of the uh, degeneration that we have been witnessing. And I think a large part of it is because of this uh, Western, uh, pol uh, Western states policies. The stepping back from even the ideas of the 300 years ago, you know, if any of those thinkers of the Enlightenment period were alive, I mean, they would be shocked that in the 21st century, we are holding an, a conference like this, talk about, talking about religion, how it is a menace, you know, how it is, uh, we still should be fighting for secularism. A lot of people thought at that time that was settled, you know. And that shows the uh, regression that has happened, the deterioration. So, so the solution, the last part of my, what I'm talking about, there is not much time, I know I've got less than three minutes now, um, is well, a very obvious one. The Western states, I think they're part of the problem. Yeah. They're part of the problem. Don't look to uh, David Cameron, don't look up to, don't, don't wait for Ed Miliband, or don't wait for Obama to come and save the people of Kobani. It's an assembly like this is who's going to save people of Kobani. And the burden of defending secularism is on, on us. We are, on a f small, uh, we are alone in this fight, but we are not small. I want to defend the left, actually. There was, since yesterday, a lot of people have been talking about the left. I think we have to define what you're talking about. If you're talking about the Socialist Workers' Party here in Britain, if you're talking about the Stop the War co Coalition, yes, they are not the left. If left turns right, then it is right. They are, they are, you call them by their name. They are the reactionary left. The left is us. The left is a huge force. It's a social movement. I'm talking about the socialist left. Social, social left which may not have organized itself. And I think assemblies like this, the gatherings like this, are uh, part of this society, of this effort. I know I've got a, just one or two minutes left. Uh, I know we have different political views here, a variety of views. But there is one point we are united in, I think, absolute categorical defense of humanity and human rights. And this is, we will not compromise on that. And I think it's a moment of reflection on ourselves because gatherings like this are extremely important. It's, it's a question of life and death, like the Kobani, what's going on? I mean, the latest news that is about to fall. And what is Turkey doing? Well, we don't expect it. That's, they are part of the problem, Turkish state. What is their so-called coalition, American coalition doing? They're part of the problem. Just now, the American state, uh, one of the leaders said that our focus is going to be on Iraq. So forget about uh, Kobani. So people, examples like Kobani and the fact that only assemblies like this are, are going to support the people of Kobani and like that is the real solution. And I'm, I'm talking, and I'm not, I'm, I just want to, us to see ourselves as a bigger force. This is the tip of an iceberg of a huge movement which can bring out the change. A lot of people are looking up to these sort of conferences. They're following, they're following it. 
And I think we can build a huge movement, a self-conscious movement, which can conf confront it. And beating uh, forces like the Islamic um, State as part of a huge the political Islamic movement and against, in defense of reviving, you know, the ideas of 300 years ago, you know, and this is a fight of civilized humanity against the regression that we are witnessing today. And um, I think we should, it's time we see that and, and start building on that. Thank you. Thank you ever so much, Baharam, not just for keeping to time. There is a use for mobile phones on the table. <laughs>